Hey there, you're listening to The Mighty Mommy with some quick and dirty tips for practical parenting. Today's topic, summer fun. Tips for planning fun summer activities. Summer break is here for most of us. This means that if you have school-age kids, they need activities to keep them stimulated. It also means that for parents of toddlers, your usual hangouts might be more packed than usual. It's time to change the routine. Depending on your location, the summer climate might send you running outdoors. I live in sunny Arizona, where the summers are mostly spent inside due to the heat. I'd like to give you some ideas of activities you can consider for the summer months, regardless of your location. The first place I always think of for indoor entertainment is the library. Most libraries have summer reading programs. Some also have storytellers. Check with your local libraries. They may have a website or you can request a schedule of events. Many bookstores now offer regular story times as well. Most of the toddler-specific story times I have attended have included songs and audience participation. This is important when you have an antsy toddler who is just learning to pay attention in a setting where other children are present. A captivating storyteller is usually easy to find by the crowd of children around her. Museums can also be fun and entertaining for all ages. Some offer hands-on exhibits as well as craft classes. Many museums also offer free admission for certain days. It's always good to check in advance. If you have a group of kids, you might be able to qualify for a group discount. You can also check out your local puppet, youth, and movie theaters. Oftentimes, these types of attractions will offer summer programs and discounts. Some older kids will enjoy doing crafts. Craft stores are a great resource for all types of crafts and craft classes. Some stores will also offer a schedule of events where free supplies and instructions are provided. The great part of doing crafts at the craft store is that you don't need to worry about messing up your house. You might be surprised by all the different types of businesses which will provide tours if you request them. Some pizza places will give kids a small tour and let each child make their own pizza. Many restaurants are more than happy to give you tours if you have a few kids to bring through. Some will charge a couple of dollars depending on what they have to offer. Police departments and fire stations are often willing to provide tours as well. If you are looking for more physically active indoor fun, check out your local gyms. Some gyms are specifically made for kids and offer gymnastics, karate, or many other types of classes. You may not need to sign up for a class. Call ahead and find out if the gym offers any open playtime. You might need to schedule the group and pay a per-child fee, but the exercise and fun is worth a couple of bucks. I've been focusing on indoor activities suitable for any climate, but a great many of you live in a location which has terrific weather for being outdoors in the summer. Kids will almost always get more fresh air and exercise with outdoor activities. Swimming is my favorite summer activity. Some facilities have indoor and heated swimming pools, which can be used year-round, but beating the heat and enjoying some sun while in the water is definitely something to look forward to in the summer. Many cities now have splash pads in the local parks. These are basically glorified sprinklers. Sometimes the water shoots up in a stream out of the ground, and sometimes it's spraying out of an animal's mouth. Regardless of the theme of the park's splash area, nearly all of them are zero depth and safe for toddlers. The best part is that it's almost always free. If your summers are mild, you can always visit a nearby zoo or animal park. If you don't have a zoo nearby, check around for a local farm or dairy. Sometimes the owners will offer tours. Many dairies have petting zoos and hay rides. Local farms and orchards offer fruit and vegetable picking at certain times of the year. There are also many outdoor gardens with beautiful summer blooms, plant life, and insect exhibits. I'm sure that I've only scraped the surface of the many activities available to get your family out of the house this summer. If you're still looking for more ideas, check out your city's government page on the web. Sometimes a city page will list events happening throughout the year. If you are a stay-at-home mom and looking for other moms for playgroups and activities, I recommend the International Moms Club. It has chapters all over the world, and there's probably a group near you planning weekly activities and playgroups. Another resource I personally use is Go City Kids. They currently have over 20 locations listed across the United States, and I'm sure they are adding more. My local listing has about 10 or more events a day. Some are right around the corner and some are across town, but there's always something going on. Another great website is mommytalk.com. This site is great for talking with other parents and finding people in your area for playgroups. There are a lot of great people on there, and it's always nice to have someone with whom you can share your parenting experiences. There will be links on the blog for all of these websites. That's it for now. Hope you enjoyed listening. If you would like to request a topic for The Mighty Mommy, or if you'd like to share a wonderful tip of your own, you can email mommy at qdnow.com or leave a voicemail at 206-222-9148. Also, if you haven't already done so, please take a moment to post a review at iTunes. I'd really appreciate it. The Mighty Mommy's Quick and Dirty Tips for Practical Parenting is part of the Quick and Dirty Tips Network at quickanddirtytips.com. 
This week, Grammar Girl is having some fun with incorrect word usage, so be sure to check out her podcast. This is your friend, the Mighty Mommy, wishing you happy and fun parenting. Mm-hmm.